why we are talking about restoration? Um, this is, a, I think, one of the important questions in, in that place. Uh, first of all, the definition of ecosystem restoration is the process to halting and reversing the degradation resulting for improved re resulted in improved ecosystem services and recovered biodiversity. This is a little bit a slightly different than the definition of uh, ecological restoration. The ecological restoration looks to um, bring back to the ecosystems to the original part, original. Uh, original way, right? Just like uh, when Adam and Eve was in in the in the Eden, just like that. The ecosystem restoration looks to improve this this ecosystem, but in order to provide better solutions or pr produce more goods and services for the for the human. Right now, of course, we need to look for healthier ecosystems to with, uh, improve the biodiversity of these ecosystems, to increase the yields, to have more um, fertile soils and etc. Because uh, the achievement of the sustainable development goals, goals uh, I mean, end the poverty, conserve the biodiversity, combat the climate change that is one of the must in, in, in these moments are unlikely to meet if we if we know how to the degradation of the ecosystems. Between now and 2030, uh, the restoration of 350 million of hectares of, ter of terrestrial and the and aquat aquatic uh, ecosystems could generate uh, 9 trillion of, of dollars in ecosystem services and can remove a huge amount of um, CO2 equivalent for to, to the atmosphere. So the restoration is a must. Restoration in this moment is an important issue that we need to address in all our our work. Um, of course, in, in the in the agriculture is one of the important issues to discuss also. Besides, of course, we also have another challenges, but the ecosystem restoration is an important issue to address in all this our in our conversations. Farmers uh, now cover more than one third of the earth, right? Land surface are perhaps one of the most vital ecosystems to sustain them with humankind. Uh, as well, supplying us to food, fodder, fiber, uh, arable fields and pastures to host uh, wildlife um, as um, a lot of variety of mi microorganisms in the in the soil, marked by centuries of the human effort and ingenuity, this modified the ecosystem's cultural treasures whose protection make it more spiritual and economic sense. Yet uh, now, the way that we are using our ecosystems um, in many of these lands are is exhausting in their vitality. Right, the uh, the intensive plowing that we see now in the in the screen, the excessive use of fertilizers is one of the threats that we uh, we facing in in the farmlands. Also, and linked with the excessive use of fertilizers, the nitrogen and pollutions, and the excessive use of pesticides are one of the main uh, main threats that we see now in the farmlands. And this is important to address. Of course, this is so only one or, or a couple of of these of the threats that we face in the farmers, mainly focused in the environmental issues. But of course, we also in the farms we face socioeconomic uh, threats linked with the production and the and the lack or the decreasing of the production and the productivity of of, of the lands. The world hunger has continued to rise, driven by part conflict disrupting, for example, a couple couple of years ago to, to the COVID-19 was a, a global threat for, for uh, the economy and particularly to the to the farmers. Uh, and particular in, in particular in this part uh, related with the farm degradation and who are the persons who are treating for, for the degradation and the destroy, destruction of the ecosystem, particularly in the, in the farmlands. I see a, 
important link with all the people involved in this conversation today with this uh how we can em empower the farming communities to build our resilience with equity and in a color collaborative uh and inclusive manner to in order to improve the improve the the way of life of the small farmers of this uh or, or the farmers in general actually right the improve the life of the rural uh, communities is an important issue for us. I think it's an important issue that all in the people in the world need to be addressed. Uh, in this in this way, we, we see an important uh, moment right now to start to talking about the importance to uh, stop the degradation of the of the farmlands not only for the environmental issues but also with the to the importance of the people who lives on uh, on, on the farms right now we have a global commitments in terms of the ecosystem restoration now we are in the decade of the ecosystem restoration this the decade of the ecosystem restoration is a uh, it's a global uh, leaded by FAO and UNEP with the understanding that the healthy ecosystems are indispensable to realize the sustainable development goals. The UN decades aims to facilitate, aid, uh, facilitate uh, for the ecosystem restoration in line with the Agenda 2030 um, and looks for between now, not now, actually, but between 2021 and 2030, the restoration of 350 million of hectares of degraded and aquatic ecosystems, right? And particularly in this, uh, for this presentation, I see an important link between the one of the main goals of the ecosystem restoration and one of the goals of this of this particular red sand, where the in the goal number two that you have the ad, uh, importance to advance solution for climate change mitigation adaptation to improve the ecological economic economic and social sustainability. It's clear the the link between these two main goals that we have now. That's why I see an a clear pathway to, to work together in terms to improve the sustainability of the agriculture and also uh, works in the ecosystem restoration worldwide. In the same way, we have now uh, in the 2022, the conference of parties of the, of the United Nations in, in terms of biodiversity have this main goal to restore at least 30% of degraded terrestrial inland waters and coastal and marine ecosystems. Also for in the next uh, 20 years. And it's also, again, I see a clear link with the, glo uh, with the goal number three of the SAN, who is enhance the biodiversity and ecosystem services to improve the productivity and profitability to promote uh, sustainable farming wor worldwide. So again, it's a clear link between the ecosystem restoration, the restoration of ecosystems, and the goals of, to have a uh, uh, sustainable uh, agriculture wor worldwide. With this, with this uh, situation that we are facing, as in Preferred by Nature, we are develop our climate and ecosystem restoration program. This program, uh, uh, we are now in our fourth year of development worldwide. Uh, in uh, our team is, um, we are quite a small team also in, in, in the world. Some of my, my colleagues are based in Spain. Malaysia, me here in Peru, but our vision as team is a world where for the health and well-being of all life on the earth and that of, of future generation, we have restored the relationship between humans and nature. We also like to highlight this part of the relationship between humans and the nature. We also, I think we are in the moment that to uh, 
highlight the importance of this relationship is, is very important in some point in some part of the history i think we are left behind the nature and using only like a tool and we are uh, forget that we are part of the nature and it is important to restore also this relationship with the main aim to increase the surface of healthy ecosystems and end the loss to the for the fragmentation and degradation this, so this is our visions um can be uh, a little bit romantic, but we really true that is one of the of the main goals of our ecosystem restoration programs. Our guidelines programs uh, pro principle, sorry, is to create and participate collaborative landscapes. That's why we are very happy to be here today because the collaboration between organizations is very important for everybody. Actually, we. Uh, I think this uh, one of the sustainable development goals uh, more left behind is the uh, the, the seventh thing, right? To make alliances and increase the partnerships between uh, all the people involved in this part. And that's why uh, one of our principles is to participate and collaborate in any uh, landscape uh, restoration effort that we see worldwide. Of course, uh, all other our principle is uh, drawing lesson from the past. Um, as you remember at the beginning, we have 30 years of experience in certification and verification schemes, and we see uh, that important lessons learned from the past can be used now in ecosystem restoration. Uh, 30 years of experience in several uh, schemes, I think it's important to provide solutions, provide lesson learned, at, in order to improve the, the solution for the futures. Well, and of course, uh, our main uh, one of the, our principles is to be inclusive and transversal in all the value change. With this, uh, we developed our solution approach that was the ecosystem restoration standard. Now in the version 3.1, this is a social and environmental standard for field verification. Our main goal with our with this standard is to help to the practitioners at the field level to improve their practices in order to achieve uh, the best way of the restoration that they can have, right? We are putting in, uh, we, we like to improve the field practitioners because we see that in case, in particular in cases of restoration, uh, monitoring in the high level, they are well developed. The GIS development for the restoration is, is quite a good, uh, but we see that we now facing a lack of, of a lack of expertise in the practitioners, and we through the verification at the field level, we we really believe that we can improve the the development of the restoration practices. Uh, the standard was developed between the year 2020 until the year until the year 2022 uh we are starting with the forestry ecosystem restoration standard in the first version of the standard was a forest restoration standard but then when we go to the field we really see that this standard and the way how we can use the standard can be used for any kind on on ecosystem right the farmers, uh, uh, the farmers are, are one of the most important ecosystems to restore right now. Actually, it's one of the eight ecosystems prioritized by the UN decade of the restoration. The farmlands, the farmlands are important, and we see that the ecosystem restoration standard is a good uh, tool to be used at the field level to improve the practitioners in terms of the restoration practices. Uh, the ecosystem restoration standard is a kind of uh, flexible standard in terms that, that we are not looking to uh, be miserable the life of the practitioners. Actually, we are we don't want to uh, complicate the life of the practitioners of the restoration because we understand that, that the restoration is 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 not a production part. Uh, uh, it's not a production activity. It's totally different to the agriculture uh, um, and it's also different to the to the forestry It's different to the fishing uh, and etc but that's why we developed the standard based in 
58 indicators uh, separate in these four stages. The first one is the planning, right? When we assess how is the landscape context, what are the threats that are facing in an ecosystem restoration project? What are the restoration that they are using? And in this particular case uh, that I want to discuss with you, uh, the uh, regenerative agriculture, we see that is one of the most important and uh, techniques that the, the, right now the practitioner are, are using in the field. We see a lot of importance to highlight the uh, agriculture, the, the regenerative agriculture is a very important restoration technique then that need to be uh, included in most of the restoration activities that include farmlands. Uh, the second stage of the ecosystem restoration standard is the tenure right and engagements. And we are developed eight indicators in this in this uh, in this stage, and we also we are very proud of, on this part because in this stage of the evaluations we uh, like to see how or we look into see how is the involvement of the stakeholders, what is the level of the stakeholder engagement in the ecosystem restoration project. We see that the stakeholder engagement provides a unique opportunity to get specific inputs, but also to ensure that any initiative keeps expanding its impact uh, as the community that learns the benefits from the mature ecosystems. Um, actually, that's why we uh, changed the name of the standard to a social and environmental standard because the uh, social issues in the ecosystem restoration uh, projects are very important to um, to look the final goal and the, a successful goal for the restoration the third uh, phase of the of the standard is the implementation part and probably this is the most uh, exciting for my colleagues engineers because now in this part we assess uh, what are the techniques that they are using for the restoration. We assess what is the, chemi uh, the, the chemical use in terms of uh, fertilizers, pesticides, and all this kind of stuff for on the, on the ecosystem restoration. We are not forbidden. We 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 believe that the fertilizers and the also uh, the use of pesticides is important to use, but in a rational way, right? This is important to, to highlight. Also in the implementation part, uh, highlight also some, mm, we are highlighted some social indicators in terms of the social aspect, aspects of the labors in the, in the fields. What is the worker conditions in the restoration projects? What is the, the, the um, the condition of the local communities in terms of, of the restoration, if they are be involved in the, in the restoration, and we assess in this part. And finally, the, the the last stage of the ecosystem restoration standard is the monitoring of the outcomes. Right. So where where it's very important also to highlight how the ecosystem restoration practitioners and the project developers are monitoring the outcomes. Also. After these four stages, we are developed two modules, optional on modules, the climate change module and the biodiversity module. When we assess how uh, is the approach of the of the uh, ecosystem restoration projects in terms of reduce in the case of the climate change in uh, to reduce the uh, amount of CO2 equivalents to the atmosphere. And in case of the biodiversity, how the ecosystem restoration projects improve the eco improve the biodiversity in the ecosystems. Again, the standard is a is a very social process. We highlight a lot the governance in in the projects, and also the tenure and the rights to to see how is the social impacts are are achieved in the in the in the project. Uh, we are not looking to complicate this issue. That's why with the documentation required, we are keep it to the minimum. We pro we we um, we look for such good social development in the field, not to develop a high uh, a two hundred pages of uh, protocol in terms of social issues.
And with this uh, ecosystem restoration standard, we are doing assessment worldwide. In this in these three years of development, we are evaluating at, um, at almost 20 different projects at the moment. We are currently uh, developing another ones. And one of the most important and one of, one of the most um, nicer projects that we are evaluating world, uh, in the world is this one in, in Spain, the project in, in Alvelal in Andalusia, where this, this project have a huge goal to restore a million hectares of highlands in, in, in Spain with uh, regenerative agriculture, right? And when we go to the, we see in the field that, of course, they have a good development of the, um, on, on, on the technical issues, but we really like to highlight here that in the importance of the governance. The, these projects are working very well to try to link the public and the private land working together, right? And this uh, finding one was one of the, the, the initial ones in the year 2021 when we do the, the first assessment. And really uh, we see the, the good development of this project in terms of the improve, improve the governance of the, of the project to increase the, the, the potential of the goal, the, to achieve the goals for the projects. And this is a particular good example on how the uh, regenerative agriculture and the ecosystem restoration can be work, uh, can work in, in the, the, the two concepts can be worked with a, with a main goal. Uh, another interesting project I'd like to share with you was the project that we assessed last year in Sao Tome and Principe. Uh, this is a FAO project that led for the, the restoration initiative to start in 2018. And this project is uh, an agroforestry project. When, and this project has a very important um, topics in terms of climate smart agriculture in cacao and coffee. And right now, this project has the potential to start a partnership with ACORN to achieve carbon credits through Plan Vivo. And when we go to the, to the, to the field, we see, um, and we provide also uh, some recommendations for, for the developers in this case, in this case, FAO, to see how the customary rights and cultural heritage in the sites, in some cases need to be, in, in, uh, they need to be included in the analysis of the ecosystem restoration standard on the ecosystem restoration project, sorry. Because uh, in some part, uh, we see that they are leaving aside a little bit of this, this cultural heritage sites they are not analyzing. And also an important finding in this part that now we see uh, they are improved a lot is the monitoring of the outcomes. Uh, the monitoring plan in some part of the, of the initial phase of the project, they, it, it was not clear. And now they are improving that 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 part because the, the it's always important to a third party give you uh, some feedback. And now they are improve the uh, the the monitoring indicators and in order to achieve better results. Uh, of course, they 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 will continue in, in the project. An important uh, some important topic to to mention here that we. Uh, or we need to think on the restoration like a long-term process. It's impossible to think in a restoration in only one, two years. So that's why the monitoring is important. You need to have uh, indicators for the short, medium, and the long-term in order to achieve a nice, a nice restoration uh, in, in the long-term. Another assessment that, that we are uh, evaluating the last year was in Costa Rica also, uh, the project on the Nogal Reserve in La, in La Selva Biodiversity Connectivity Project. This project is developed by Chiquita in, in Costa Rica and where uh, the main goal of this restoration project is to restore the biodiversity corridors in Costa Rica. We, are, we, we now Costa Rica, probably I, I know here we, we have a lot of, of personnel of Costa Rica. Uh, it's a high... Uh, fragmented areas and they have a huge 
uh, biodiversity richness in, in the country. So Chiquita wants to improve uh, their their um, their approach in terms of, of sustainability through the biodiversity, and they are start to create these corridors of biodiversity with the small for small farmers in the surrounded area or, or the big farms of, of of bananas, and. One of the main outcomes here that we like to highlight, also besides the technical part that they are they are doing in a in a nice way, the stakeholder engagement is some some important issue that we like to highlight in in this project. The incentivize and promote environmental education in the surrounding areas, and integrate the community as a key part of this management of the corridors is very important outcome of the restoration project. Besides all this uh, good uh, work that uh, Chiquita is doing in environmental and social issues, in this particular case, the in stakeholder engagement, particularly the community engagement of, of the of the projects, is very important for 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 the success of the of the project. Finally. Um, at the beginning of this year, we developed this assessment. I, I do it uh, by myself in Ethiopia. Ethiopia is a is a big uh, is a is a big country with a lot of challenges in terms of different 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 issues. Uh, but uh, this restoration project at the beginning we see like a forestry. A, a unique forestry restoration uh, project. But at the moment that we go to the field, we see that the importance of the agroforestry and the and the uh, regenerative agricultural practices that they are putting in place with the surrounding communities is a key issue for the success of the restoration of the surrounded forest. The traditional knowledge that this uh, project are putting in place for the agroforestry agro arrangements is a key solution for the intervention and the success of this project. The tree planting only can be succeeded if there is a major challenge that in this case, if the poverty of the people and the poverty only be taken if they have a good resources for our forestry and agriculture in general. So the use, the, the use of uh, regenerative agriculture principles, in particular the conservation of soil and main target is very, very important in this case. We see a lot of connections between our, uh, good practices of agriculture uh, soil management improve the biodiversity of the soil and good results in terms of the of the biodiversity and and tree planting in in, in the forest currently also we are developed the uh the assessment of the ppc project uh, the planet priceless coalition of mastercard we are evaluating 18 projects worldwide in terms of restoration in different ecosystems in dif with different in interventions. And we are providing solutions in terms to, uh, this is this project is not uh, exactly with our standard. We are providing an, a, a tailored services in this case for MasterCard Conservation International and WRI uh, to assess the, ecosystem, the, the restoration projects uh, because I think the, the, it's also important to, to, to mention here that we can adapt to, to the different projects, right? Uh, but in terms, in general terms, we use our standard as, uh, as a proxy for doing the evaluations. And of course, just uh, this is the last slide that we have. I like to highlight that also we are develop uh, a lot of uh, capacity buildings in terms of the restoration worldwide. This was this was uh, one of the nicer projects of, of capacity building that we are having with in hands with Solidaridad Network. Uh, of course, they are my friends. So <laughs> I, I, I also like to to, to, to remind that this, this was a very good experience because we have in, in, this, in this training, we have people from different value chains, people from palm oil, uh, cocoa, uh, coffee, forestry, of course, um, rice, 
and from different countries. We have here, you see in, in the picture, we have Peruvians, uh, people from Bolivia, Venezuela, Colombia, and Chile. So it was a very nice opportunity to share experience and all beyond the, the umbrella of the ecosystem restoration and the uh, achievement of the, of the climate change goals.